All right, but this will not do. What we need to do is measure if the code is working fine, validate if the code is working fine. You need to see, okay, this is my, you remember the whole uh, thing that I talked about, expectation versus reality, right? This is the expected output. You're gonna run the code, see the actual output, and then compare expected versus actual. If expected versus actual, if they do both match, expected is equal to actual, then you want the green bar. If expected is not equal to actual, you want JUnit to let you know, right? You want in, you know, Eclipse to tell, okay, there's a red bar, JUnit did not pass all the tests. So how do you do this? Two steps, right? First, execute the code that you want to, you want to test, and then verify the result is what you expect. Simple, right? If you run these two, if you run these two steps, you can you have validated your your test, right? You know that the code is doing what you want it to do. But then there are a few more steps you have to do just to get to these two steps. There is one more hidden step, which is you have to create an instance of the class under test. You want to create a test for Math utils. You want to say you want to see if add is doing the right job. Well, add is not a static method, so in order to call add, you need an instance of the class under test. So this is another common pattern. Whenever you're testing something, you always create an instance of that class. If you're testing static methods, not required, but it's not very often that you write uh, a lot of static methods. And then once you've created the class under test, you also set up inputs. You say, okay, now I'm creating this class. I want to test the add method. I need the, these inputs to be passed to the method under test, and then it's only then you get the expected output based off of your inputs that you're passing in. So you remember this thing that uh, we looked at, right? For the calculator, we had um, the instance created. You give it the expected. Uh, you give it the inputs that you wanted to run. And here's the expected output. And then if that if those don't match, then you have uh, system.out.println, right? This part is what we're gonna be changing. You cannot have system out println happen for a huge code base. People are gonna go crazy looking at all the logs, right? It's not feasible. So what you want is a better way of alerting. So we're gonna be hooking on to the JUnit's way of reporting test failures, and we're gonna be hooking on to Eclipse's way of reporting that to you in the green bar. And uh, we're gonna have that be the signal and say, hey, the test failed, rather than printing something to the console. So that's gonna be the next exercise, which is creating a test for the add method, right? Um, Let's do that now. What's the first step we need to do? Go back to Package Explorer. This is our method under test, right? So what I'm gonna do is first create a new instance of this. So I'm gonna say mathutils equals new mathutils, right? And then I need to get the input prepared. I need to call mathutils dot add, right? So in order that, in order to do that, I need to create the input. So let's say I have, uh, I'm trying to add, let's say uh, one plus one. I wanna make sure that the value that it returns is two. So I'm going to say uh, int expected is two and actual is this guy here, mathutils.add of one and one, right? Now I need a way to compare uh, expected with actual. I can technically say if expected is not equal to actual, system.out.println, but then again, we don't wanna do that. We wanna leverage JUnit's way of reporting an error so that we get the nice uh, green bar or the nice red bar not so nice red bar if things fail. So the way to kind of leverage uh, JUnit's way of doing things is to use what's called assertions, right? Assertions are a way in which you can assert through the, the, the English meaning of the word. Uh, you, can, you can make sure that what you assume to be 
a fact is actually true. So you want to assert if expected is equal to actual. So there are a bunch of methods in the assertion. So you see here the default class that uh, Eclipse created has an import here. It has an import static, uh, arg junit Jupyter API assertions dot star. So all the assert assertion methods are imported by uh, this one thing. There are a bunch of assertion methods. We're gonna be looking at some of those. Uh, the first assertion method we're gonna be looking at is assert equals. So assert equals is a method which takes in two arguments, expected and actual. And notice what happens when you pass in those things. So I'm passing in expected to this, the first argument and actual as the second argument. So you're basically saying, hey, JUnit, I'm asserting that expected and actual are the same. So if they're not equal, let me know, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run this test again. Right click, run. I'm gonna go, I'm going to the JUnit uh, tab here uh, in case uh, this isn't familiar to you, right? This should be familiar to a lot of Java developers. So here you see it's, it's passed, right? Because the, what you asserted, JUnit says, yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I, I see that it's true. But notice what happens when I change this. Let's so change this to one and then I run this. You're gonna get an error, right? This says expected one, but was two. You didn't have to write the system.out.println and all that stuff. JUnit is handling the reporting for you. And this is the advantage of using the JUnit API. You're telling it what you expect, you're telling it what the actual is, and then you're telling JUnit, hey, you do the rest, right? You report and tell, like, give me the details if they don't match. So JUnit is doing the work, comparing it. When it's not matching, it's telling you this is exactly what happened. This is what this is exactly what you expected, and this is exactly what you got back, and this doesn't match, and this is the reason why I'm showing you a red bar. It's convenient, right? It's, it's much better than writing the code yourself to compare those things. Okay, so guess what? We wrote our first unit test with JUnit 5. We did a bunch of imports. Uh, oh, this is another thing I wanna clarify. If you're used to JUnit 4, you should notice that the imports are a little bit different in JUnit 5. So you see here, there is the at test annotation, which is coming from our JUnit Jupyter API test. So this is different from the old test uh, classes in JUnit uh, 4. I don't remember what the old test is, but it's definitely not Jupyter. Jupyter is a code name for JUnit 5, like I told you. Similarly, other assertions are coming from JUnit Jupyter package. So this is different in, um, in JUnit 5. 